Welcome to Slibboat's Enter the Gungeon General Strategy video. Although you can beat the game, it basically has no end. Knowing this when you start out will help you be patient about your learning process, because I'm still here after a thousand hours having fun at flipping tables. Unless you're a bullet hell roguelike god, chances are you're gonna die around 40 to 60 times or more before you beat the game for the first time. That's 40 to 60 hours of fun and agony, but it goes by quick if you know this at the outset. Having a goal each time you play is a great way to have fun knowing you will die. It's very important to be patient in this game. There isn't a timer, and learning and building new skills will go a long way to how much fun you get out of the gungeon. Try to keep your eyes on your character as threats can approach from every direction, even when you think you're undercover. Get to know the game and the levels playing the hunter. Dog will help a new player through an entire run. The crossbow is a really useful weapon to have on you from the beginning. It helps with the hard aspects of the early parts of the game. Try to always be moving or undercover. Most enemy attacks can be avoided by constantly moving to the side. Moving backwards also helps slow down the bullets as they travel towards you, making them easier to walk around. Some enemy attacks lead into sideways movement. You will have to identify them as soon as you can when you enter a room because usually you will want to kill them first. Avoid dodge rolling unless it is an attack that requires it. You will figure out over time when to dodge and when to keep your feet on the ground. The shape of some rooms is designed to trip up these strategies. The safe part of a room isn't always as big as the room itself. Get good at flipping tables as you get near them. They provide valuable cover. Flipping a table also blanks bullets in a small circle around the table. Once it's on its side, you can move a table around by walking into it. I didn't flip tables at first and I would often get stuck on the table and take damage because I thought it was moving. Passives are more important than guns, and most runs you won't have enough keys for every chest. On every floor, one chest room has a gun, and the other has an item. If you know the chest has a gun, and it's brown or blue, smash it. Playing this game, you want as many passive items as you can get. The way they combine together to make any gun you have stronger is what helps you beat the game the most. On any level with the boss reward, if you have added a new gun to your inventory, there is a chance the reward will be an item. If you didn't get a new gun on that floor, the reward for killing the boss will always be a gun. You can manipulate this by carrying an empty gun in your inventory and throwing it and picking it up once each floor. Be sure to drop the gun before picking up an ammo spread and don't forget to pick the gun back up again. Once you master the game, most of your runs you will have extra guns in your inventory and many guns you barely use. Passive stack but having a lot of guns in your inventory doesn't do as much. You want to have the money to buy an amulet if you are given the chance. Their effect will be added to items like the elder blank and tech table blanks. Amulet's effects are also added to companions that activate blanks. Secret rooms are most frequently found in chest rooms the elevator room at the end of the level, and the main shop. Rooms with an NPC running a shop are the next most common places for them. The entrance to a secret room will always be in the same place a door can spawn for that room layout. Secret rooms are usually on the outer edge of a map. They will not protrude into the region of the map that extends beyond a box drawn on the edges of the map that lead off the first room. When you first start out playing, you will encounter people you can rescue in the gungeon. These floors frequently do not have secret rooms in the common places, as the NPC room replaces it. There are three secret floors. The first is between floor 1 and 2. To get there, you need to do something, and then you will need to use two keys. Even though you may not know how to get to the first secret floor, you should practice playing the game so that you always leave the first floor with two keys. This is why the hunter is such a strong pick when you first start playing the game. The crossbow is a reliable boss weapon for the first two floors and can help you with the harder rooms in the first levels. Some items make you cooler. Coolness does a few things. First, it lowers the cooldown of your active items. Second, it increases the chances of a reward appearing when you clear a room. Smoking cigarettes makes you cooler. Carrying ice cubes makes you cooler too. More money and items makes the game more fun and easier in the long run. If you go to all the extra floors, you at minimum will get between three to 14 more items in your run, plus money and shops and secret rooms. Selling items is a great way to get money for the shops run by other NPCs you might encounter. If you have revealed the shop and the sell creep is there, you can teleport there, drop an item, teleport back to your last location, pick up an item on the ground before the rat steals it, then teleport back to the shop before the rat steals the other item. Now you can sell what you don't want and screw the rat! There is an NPC that will buy health from you. This is one of the best ways to get money and one of the biggest reasons you want to play well and not need any health dropped on any floors. An item that allows you to steal from shopkeepers is very valuable. Stealing increases your curse by one. When stealing from a shopkeeper, the first attempt will always be successful. If you try to steal again, they have a high chance of catching you, and you won't get the item, and the shop will clear out. Bella remembers you across the floors, but the other shopkeepers do not, so you can steal from them once, and sometimes twice, each time you see them. 
At least twice a level, I will drop all my guns and pick them up again in the order I want to use them. I like to have one order for playing through the level and another for fighting bosses. Using the next gun bind and having your guns in a set order in your inventory will make clearing rooms and fighting bosses more fun and flow more smoothly. Some guns are really good to use right when you enter a room to help you control the crowd of enemies. Guns will reload in the background while you use others. Because of this, you can have a cycle of a few guns you switch between, emptying the clip in each before moving on and then starting the cycle again. This gives you a lot of crowd control as you can always be shooting when you need to be once you have a few solid guns. When ammo appears after you clear a room, you can save it for later if you do this trick. Teleport to another room and then teleport back by entering the purple portal. The rat that was about to steal the ammo will peace out when you come back. Now you can explore adjacent rooms, there's one type of hallway in the gungeon that counts as a room, and use the gun you were going to refill the ammo for to clear the rooms faster. You can also use ammo and ammo spreads to empty a gun completely, throw it, and pick it up again to fill. Active items are useful and very strong in this game. Some have very short cooldowns that mean you can use them every few rooms. They add a lot of fun to the game and often change your playstyle in the run. To me, they're my favorite part of the game and one of the reasons why I try to exploit the game to give me more items rather than guns.